Law of Sines. Why do we need the law of sines? Well, up to this point, we've been using sine, cosine, tangent, and their inverses, all with right triangles. So we know the relationships, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and so forth. But if you'll take a look at triangle ABC, this is called an oblique triangle. And all of the sides in an oblique triangle have different lengths. Now this happens to be an acute oblique triangle. And acute means that the largest angle is less than 90 degrees, whereas an obtuse oblique triangle, the largest angle would be greater than 90 degrees. And obviously if it's equal to 90 degrees, that's a right triangle. So we need the law of sines because it's going to allow us to solve the triangle even when the triangle is not right. The law of sines doesn't work for all oblique triangles. We have to have one of the two conditions. We have to have two angles and a side, so either angle, side, angle. And when we say angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side, we're talking about having them in that order as we would move around the triangle. So for instance, our triangle ABC, we have an angle and then a side and then an angle. So this is the angle side angle option. We could also have angle angle side. So say instead of 32, we knew this angle right here, then we would have angle angle side and it would still work because the main thing that you need in the law of sines is you need to have an angle and the side opposite. So we can see in our example here, we don't have an angle in the side opposite, but we have two angles. And whenever we have two angles of a triangle, we know that we can find the third angle because the three angles of a triangle add to 180 degrees. So that's one of the options. The other is that we have two sides, but that the angle that we know is opposite one of them. And that's called side side angle. Now this one is a little bit tricky it's got some instances where it doesn't work or it works more than once and we'll go through those later. But let's take a look here at our angle side angle example. The first thing that we would do is find the missing angle because in order to use the law of sines, we're going to be using two of the three of the ratios. And one of the ratios, we have to have everything known. We have to have the angle and the side opposite. So the first thing I would do in our example here is to add 32 and 85 and angle B and set that equal to 180 to find that the measure of angle B is 63 degrees. So this is 63 degrees. Now I can use the law of sines because I know angle B and I know the side opposite B. So I'm going to set it up as 19 over sine of 63 degrees. That's my known. And then I could have chosen to find either A or C next. So obviously I'm finding A next. So I'm using angle A is 32 degrees and we're finding side A. So side A is my unknown. Now the math here is pretty straightforward. We're just going to cross multiply and then divide each side by whatever is being multiplied by our variable. So I get that A is 19 times the sine of 32 degrees divided by the sine of 63 degrees. Don't do any rounding in the middle, just plug it into your calculator just like that and get about 11.3. So I have about 11.3. Now when I do my work to find the other missing side, because I've almost solved the triangle, I now have to find C and I'm going to be using 85, but don't use 32 degrees and 11.3 as my known, because again, 11.3 was rounded. And so because we rounded it, we want to use exact values if possible. So I'm still going to use 63 and 19 as my known ratio, 19 divided by sine of 63, and then of course C divided by sine of 85. The math here exactly the same and I end up with about 21.24. So I was able to solve that triangle.
Here's a question for you to try on your own. I would like you to press pause, try the question, and then press play to see how you did. To begin with, let's just point out a few things. First of all, this is the second way that we can use law of sines, and that's when you have two sides and the angle opposite one of the sides. And just to be clear so that I know that we're all on the same page, this is angle B, and angle B opens up to side B. So this is side B is five feet, and when I say opens up to, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the angle and the side opposite. So the other thing I want to point out is that we have to have an angle and the side opposite in order to use the law of sines, and that when I'm using the sine of 87 and 5, that's the one that I'm going to use in both instances of the law of sines, because these are not approximations, these are values given to us. So the only other value that I know is 4.7, and that's side A, because it's opposite angle A. So my first ratio is going to look like 4.7 divided by sine of A is equal to 5 divided by sine of 87. And then again, the math is pretty straightforward. Cross multiply, divide to get sine of A by itself. Now this one is a little bit trickier. So once we get to this point, we haven't done this yet. We're trying to solve for A, and in order to get rid of sine, I have to take the inverse sine of each side. So that's what I'm going to do is take the inverse sine of each side so that the left-hand side turns into A. And on the right-hand side, I want you to plug it in just like this. So we're already going to end up with an approximated answer. But what I don't want to see and what a lot of students do is they'll use their calculator to approximate 4.7 times sine of 87 divided by 5, or even worse, approximate sine of 87 and then multiply by 4.7 and then divide by 5. And then you've got rounding upon rounding upon rounding. So take your calculator and plug it in exactly like this, and you should get that A is about 69.84 degrees. And then once you know that we have angle B and the newly found angle A, we can add and subtract from 180 to find angle C, which is 23.16. And then when I do law of sines again, I'm going to use that same exact ratio, but this time with C and sine of 23.16. Cross multiply, divide, in this case, I don't have to take the inverse sign. I'm just plugging that into my calculator, and I get about 1.97 feet. So when I say solve the triangle, I have solved for the missing side, which is 1.97 feet for C, and I have found angle A, and I have found angle C. The last two applications that we're going to talk about have everything to do with understanding H. And your textbook, I'm sorry to say, does a poor job of talking about what is H? Well, H is just the height. It's the altitude of a triangle. So let's just bring it way back to when we first learned how to find the area of a triangle. We said the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. And hopefully whoever taught you that for the first time stressed the fact that the base and the height have to be perpendicular to one another. So they have to make a 90 degree angle. So let's say I wanted to find the area of this triangle. If I were trying to find the area of this triangle, I would take one half times the length of AB, which is from here to here, and then I couldn't take it times AC because that's not a 90 degree angle. And I couldn't take it times AB because that's not a 90 degree angle. But I could draw this altitude from C to AB. And altitudes have the property that they are going to go from the opposite side and connect at a 90 degree angle. So it's not going to bisect AB. I'm not splitting AB in half. I'm making a 90 degree angle. So I would take one half 
times AB times, we're just going to call this H. So this would work just fine, except I don't know H. How am I going to find H? Well, up to this point, I didn't have a 90 degree angle. But I, when I drew my altitude, I now have a 90 degree angle. I have a right angle from C to AB. So let's say I was trying to find H and I knew angle A. Well, looking just at this little triangle that I've now created that is in fact a right triangle, I could say the sine of A is equal to H, because that would be the side opposite, over the hypotenuse, which is side AC. So let's take a moment and replace AB and AC with what we normally call them. AC, we normally call side B because it's across from B. So let's take AC and call it B. And let's take AB, we usually call C because it's across from angle C. So now we have one half times C. And then I want to know what H is. Well, let's manipulate our equation. H would be B times sine of A. So I could replace H with B sine A. So this is how I could find the area of the triangle. That's one of the ways. Now, as you can see, I could have drawn my altitude from here and made a 90 degree angle, and that would change things a little bit. Or I could have drawn the altitude from here and made a 90 degree angle, and that would change things a little bit as well. But what I want you to understand about H the height, so if this would be like height 2, so height sub 2 or height sub 3, in order to find those values, height 2 would be equal to not B sine A, but because I'm using B C here, I could find height 2 as B sine C or C sine B. So again, this is using B C as the base. So you can see we're just going to be using the same two letters, whereas I used H is B sine A or I could have said H is A sine B. This was using the base AB. So hopefully that gives us a good base to move forward. And we're now going to look at some examples of side side angle that don't work. And of course, finding the area of triangles. So going back to the example that you tried on your own, we did have a side side angle case and everything worked perfectly and we didn't have any issues, but that's not always going to be the case. So we're going to use H is B sine A or H is A sine C or whatever we need for whichever base we're going to use. We have three instances where it's not going to always work out the way we plan. So the first is A is acute, so angle A is acute, and A is less than H. And so what that means is A is less than the height of the figure. So in this case, when we say A is less than H, you might be saying, okay, well, if I drew H right here, side A is not less than H. But what I'm talking about is angle A, and then if I drew an altitude, from C to AB, this would be H, and A is less than that. Now, I could plug it into the formula to find H to be A sine C 
or H to be B sine A, but let's just go ahead and use the law of sines and show you what happens in case you failed to check that. I have A is 15, B is 25, and angle A is 85 degrees. So using the way that I did this before, I'm going to use 15 and sine of 85 as the, the st standard, the solid one that I know both values. And then I have B, and I'm trying to find um, the angle B. So if I do that, I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to find sine of B is equal to 25 times sine of 85 divided by 15. Then I take the inverse sine of that, and it doesn't work. Why? Because this value is like 1.66 something. And I can't take the inverse sine of 1.66. That value has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. Because we know that that's what sine is going to oscillate between. So that is why I get an error. If I tried to draw the picture, I would see that this side is never going to connect with the side that is so long um, B as 25. One other thing to point out is that the bigger the angle, the larger the side opposite. And so if angle, I'm sorry, if B is 25, angle B would have to be greater than 85 because B is greater than A. So angle B would have to be greater than 85, and in this case, that doesn't work. Let's look at the next example where you're not going to come up with a solution. So what if A is obtuse and A is less than or equal to B? Same idea. So we have A is 120.5 degrees. We have side A is 12. But remember, side A has to be the biggest side because I can't have an angle more than 120.5 degrees. Otherwise, it's not going to add up to 180 to be a triangle. And so with B being greater than A, we know that this, again, is not going to give us a triangle. Our last example, I think, is the most interesting. So if I have a situation where H is less than A, but A is less than B, I could actually have two separate triangles. And I could have a triangle here. Or I could have a triangle here. Each of them uses the same values for A either 12 meters there or 12 meters here, and for C, but obviously would have a different value of B and different angles. And so to show you the math there, I would have taken 112 divided by sine of 20.5 equals 31 divided by sine of angle A. And when I find the inverse sine of A, I actually find two values and both of them would work. So either 64.8 or 115.2. So this would be the 64.8 degrees. And then I would have the green triangle. Or this would be the 115.2 degrees. And that would be the blue triangle. And I'm not going to finish that. But of course, you could finish that very easily to find the appropriate length for side B. We already did a lot of the legwork here for finding the area of an oblique triangle, so I've simply rewritten those formulas for you. Area equals 1 half BC times sine of A, or 1 half AB times sine of C, or 1 half AC times sine of B. So in this particular example, um, if I'm trying to find the area and I have 40 and 60 and then the side 10, obviously I'm going to need the side 10. I could find this more than one way. I chose to find it first by, of course, finding the measure of angle B to be 80 degrees because the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180. And then I chose to find C, and you could have done it either finding C or finding A. So I'm finding C. So again, I'm using sine of 60. Then I find C is about 8.79 degrees, and then I'm just going to plug it into my area formula. 
So 1 half times 10 times 8.79 times sine of 40. So again, you just have to be careful because I'm using sine of 40, I'm using angle A, I need to use side B and side C. So if you're up for a challenge, and I did this on my own, um, go ahead and do the exact same thing, but instead find A and then use 1 half times 10 times what you get for A and then times sine of 60 and you'll find that you get the same value. I apologize this video is getting a little long but we definitely needed to do an application question together involving bearings because they can be very difficult. So let's take a look at how I would solve this question. We have a plane flies 500 kilometers with a bearing of 316 degrees from Naples to Elgin. So I just want to point out that yes, I gave you a picture, but I should be able, based on the information in the question, to draw the picture on my own. We have 500 kilometers with a bearing of 316. So I would start by drawing a beautiful origin and saying, okay, 316 degrees is 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus another 46 degrees. Okay. So this is Naples in the middle, and this guy is Elgin, and this was 500 kilometers. And we found that this was 46 degrees. And then from Naples to Canton, Canton is due west, so Canton's over here. We're going from Elgin down to Canton, and that's 720 kilometers. And we're trying to find what's the bearing. So we're trying to find from Elgin, what's that bearing. So right away, I know it's more than 180 degrees, but that's all I know. So let's talk about how we could do this. I'm trying to find the bearing from Elgin to Canton. And I know that's going to be 90 plus 90 plus whatever that angle is. So I'm going to say the bearing is equal. Uh, I'm going to put actually write bearing just so that we don't get confused with angle B or whatever. 180 plus something. So the something is what we're after. Um, and we'll call this the question mark right here. From here, I don't have a right triangle. I do have, if I get rid of this, I do have an angle of 46 that we found and the side opposite of 720. And I could probably find this angle because I know the side opposite is 500. So let's start there. 720 divided by sine of 46 degrees equals 500 divided by sine of C. Do the math, cross multiply, use the inverse sine function, find that this angle is about 30 degrees. Now I drew an altitude and an altitude as we know is 90 degrees. So if the angle at Canton is 30 degrees and this guy is 90 degrees, then isn't my question mark 60 degrees? And if my question mark is 60 degrees, then my bearing is 90 plus 90 plus 60, which is 240 degrees. Coming up next is the law of cosines.